Now, a little more briefly than before, we look at the problem of finding the initial velocity that would hit the trash can one meter below the release position, four meters in the horizontal direction. If we start at the 37 degree angle and we get these equations, okay, our initial x velocity, of course, v naught cosine 37 degrees, initial y velocity, v naught sine 37 degrees. Um, also, when x is 4 meters, y has to be negative 1 meter, 1 meter below the position, if we assume our initial position is the origin. Then our functions, our, our equations for x will be 0.8 v naught t, in other words, our v naught x times t, and y will be our negative 1 half at squared, our negative 5 meters per second squared, not 0.5 meters per second squared, times t squared, plus 0.6 v naught t, initial y velocity times t. Now, and x has to be 4 meters when y is negative 1 meter, so we plug those values in for x and y, and now we have two equations, simultaneous equations with the variables t and v naught, and we solve these equations. Now, the, the, you, you should see how to solve these equations because it's very similar to what we already did, but solve this equation for t, plug it into the second equation, you're going to get an equation that doesn't have t in it. It's going to have v naughts, and you solve for v naught. Uh, you're going to get a quadratic equation here. Um, actually, yeah, you get a quadratic equation, but one of the solutions will probably be negative. Um, which, yeah, actually shouldn't happen. You should get a unique value. Anyhow, solve the equations and you'll see. Okay, <clears throat> another possible situation is uh, you solve, you want to find theta if you know your initial velocity. You want to find at what angle to shoot this cannonball if you know what its initial velocity coming out of the cannon is going to be. And that's pretty much uh, what you would know. You would have fixed charges. The charge would tell you how fast that cannonball is going to be traveling. Um, and you want to find the angle you need to make it land where you want it to land. Okay, so uh, to do this, what would we have? Well. Now this is not a cannonball, this is our piece of chalk, but the same idea. Uh, if your initial velocity is 6 meters per second, then your initial x velocity is going to be 6 meters per second times cosine theta. So your 4 meters will equal 6 meters per second times cosine theta, your initial x velocity times t. Uh, your y, I don't know why I put 5 in there, except I wasn't thinking. Um, your y is going to be negative 1 meter, and uh, that's going to equal your negative 1 half at squared, where the acceleration is your negative 10 meters per second squared, uh, plus your v naught sine theta, which is your initial y velocity, times t. Now you should think about what all that means, but once you have these two equations, you just solve for theta and t. But that's pretty tricky. That one kind of flummoxed me. Look up that word if you don't know what it means. Uh, when I was in physics, I eventually figured it out, but you know, wasn't all that comfortable with it. Um, it's a little bit difficult. It's kind of th this is probably the most difficult situation you can run into uh, with basic introductory physics uh, projectile problems. Actually, there's one that's even a little worse if you're shooting up a hill, um, but. Uh, Okay, so t and theta are your unknowns. The problem with this is that theta is bound up in a cosine and a sine. So I'm going to give you a couple of hints, as I said before. Uh, the sine and the cosine are related. Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. So that the cosine of the sine of theta is the square root of 1 minus cosine squared theta. So I can replace this equation with this where I just replaced the sine theta with 1 minus cosine squared theta. Now that looks actually a little uglier because you got that square root in there, now you got a squared cosine, what are you going to do about that? Uh, well, you're going to have to live with it, but the easiest way to live with it is now to say, okay, I'm going to not solve for, try to solve for theta and t, I'm just going to solve for cosine theta. 
I and and, and uh, T, not V naught. So, and I don't even have to solve for T uh, if I'm just interested in my angle. Um, okay. So instead of, uh, of worrying about theta, let's just solve for cosine theta. And to make it easier to see, let's just let u stand for cosine theta. Our equations will become this. And now we solve this equation for u, for the system for u. Uh, yeah, we just solve this equation for t, plug it in for t down here, and now we just have an equation here in u. Now, I didn't say that equation is easy to solve. It isn't. Uh, it's going to stretch you a little bit. You can probably haven't solved anything uh, of that nature, but maybe you have. Um, but if you just keep your wits about you and use your algebra, uh, hopefully you can find your solution. Um, okay. Uh, then, uh, once you get u, set that equal to cosine theta and solve for theta. Okay. You get, actually get two solutions. One of them makes sense, one of them doesn't. Yeah, but you want to think through what they both tell you. Uh, if, if you have a theta here, uh, the cosine of this angle is the same as the cosine of this angle because they both project to the same point on the x-axis. So if theta is a solution, so it's 360 degrees minus theta, right? Uh, but obviously, uh, this solution is not going to help you uh, hit the trash can or the cannonball. Um, and this solution would not fit into your first equation, but I'll let you sort that out. <laughs>